Crocodiles are often depicted in the media as hunting dinosaurs at the river's edge. But the fossil record up until this point has mainly been in the form of tooth marks left by crocodile teeth on either dinosaur bones or dinosaur material. This has been the case up until now. A new discovery has been made in Australia. The world's first non-avian dinosaur to be found in the stomach of a crocodile. This crocodile represents a new species discovered in central Queensland. It's called Confractosuchus soroctonus. Hi folks, I'm Andrew. Welcome to Prehistoric Australia. I'm really excited to be talking about today's episode with this brand new discovery. But the big question that's hanging around in my brain is, was this dinosaur scavenged or hunted by this crocodile? Well, let's go to the scene of the crime, look at the evidence and find out. I think to fully appreciate how important this discovery is for paleontology all over the world, it pays to understand the history of fossil evidence that crocodiles spent on dinosaurs. Most of the evidence up until now has come from crocodile tooth marks on dinosaur bones and other material. There are many examples, mostly from the Cretaceous period. Dinosuchus, for example, is a famous crocodilian from the United States that fed on dinosaurs. Its tooth marks have been found on hadrosaur vertebrae in the state of Texas. Another recent discovery in Spain was tooth marks left on titanosaur eggs by a land-based crocodile called Orgrosuchus foritas. There are many, many examples of crocodile tooth marks being found on dinosaur bones, but nowhere in the world has a non-avian dinosaur been discovered inside the stomach of a crocodile. Until now. Museum staff and volunteers were digging away on Eldersley Station near Winton, looking for titanosaur bones, when instead they struck paleontological gold. They had discovered a new fossil crocodile. The skull and skeleton were fragile and contained within a concretion of sediment. So to avoid damage to the skeleton, X-ray scanning techniques were used to recreate 3D models of the skeleton bones in the computer. This was when the bones of the tiny juvenile ornithopod dinosaur were discovered inside the stomach of the crocodile. After years of preparation and research, finally, this year, the remarkable discovery was ready to be announced to the world. On the 10th of February 2022, a new paper was published by Matt Wy and others in the science journal Gondwana Research. It described a new species of crocodile called Confractosuchus soroctonus, and inside its stomach, a new undescribed species of ornithopod dinosaur. The skull of Confractosuchus is near complete and contains 33 preserved teeth. Its skeleton was originally found still partially joined together. These skeletal bones include its front legs, vertebrae, ribs, osteoderms, and gastralia. Only the tail, pelvic girdle, and back legs had most of the bones missing. Overall, the skeleton of Confractosuchus is 35% complete. Its vertebrae tells us a few interesting things about Confractosuchus. Firstly, this specimen's vertebrae were not all fused together, indicating that this individual was not fully developed when it died. It was a sub-adult or teenager. Secondly, its vertebrae shows that it belonged to a group of crocodilians called Eusuchia, otherwise known as true crocodiles. As you can see, this crocodile skeleton was complete enough to be named its own species. Sadly, the same couldn't be said about the ornithopod inside its stomach. What's really significant about this ornithopod is it's the first ornithopod skeleton to be discovered in the Winton Formation. It was found partly digested in the stomach area of the crocodile. Its messy collection of bones included three vertebrae, two femurs or upper leg bones, and a left tibia or lower leg bone. There were also other bones that couldn't be identified from the x-ray results. All of these bones were assumed to have belonged to the same individual. Although not connected, the positioning of the vertebrae suggests that some bodily tissues were still attached to the ornithopod when the crocodile died. That's how we know that this dinosaur wasn't fully digested. The vertebrae of this ornithopod was also not fused in many places. This lack of vertebral fusion combined with the dinosaur's tiny size meant that this individual was clearly a juvenile when it died. 
The femurs, its upper leg bones, are the most interesting feature. Firstly, it tells us that this dinosaur was an ornithopod, because its femurs possess an ancestral trait of all non-iguanodontian ornithopods. This trait is called the pendant fourth trochanter, and it's positioned at the top of the femurs. The second interesting fact about one of its femurs is that it has a tooth mark, presumably made when someone munched into it. And the third interesting fact is that Confractosuchus bit the other femur clean in half. Ugh, I'm starting to hope that this poor little dinosaur was already dead when this crocodile started crunching it to pieces. In this paper, Matt White and others suggested that the tibia, or its lower leg bone, could mean this dinosaur could be named its own unique species. However, they also note that just because it's small and thin could mean that this dinosaur was just a juvenile and that it need an adult specimen to be discovered for the two to be compared. So for now, this baby dinosaur will just be unnamed. Before we discuss how this dinosaur may have ended up in the stomach of a crocodile, it's important to understand where they lived and how they came to interact in the first place. Confractosuchus and the ornithopod were found in the rocks of the Winton Formation. This means they both lived in central Queensland during the late Cretaceous period, around 93 million years ago. For crocodiles like Confractosuchus to survive, the local climate must have always experienced temperatures no lower than 16 degrees Celsius. The Winton region at this time was a gentle river system with slow moving currents. The region was also full of lakes, streams, billabongs, floodplains and subtropical forests. Fossil evidence shows that other potential prey lived beneath the water's surface. These included lungfish, turtles and semi-aquatic lizards. Confractosuchus likely coexisted or even competed with many other species of crocodilians. This is likely because many undescribed crocodile teeth have been found at fossil sites all over the Winton Formation. Confractosuchus wasn't even the first species of crocodile to be named from the Winton Formation. That honour goes to Isisfordia duncani. But these two crocodiles didn't coexist, as Isisfordia lived a few million years earlier, between 98 and 95 million years ago. But regardless, Confractosuchus likely had competition and coexisted with other crocodilians in its Winton environment. So the big question is, what was the predatory lifestyle of Confractosuchus? Was it more of a scavenger or a hunter? Let's find out. If we want to understand the predatory behavior of Confractosuchus, we need to recreate what happened 93 million years ago. Here's what we know. The Confractosuchus specimen was a sub-adult or teenage crocodile that was around two to two and a half meters long and still growing. Osteoderms, or bony plates of armor, lined its back. It had a typical crocodilian shape and legs that allowed it to both walk on land and swim in water. Its head was around 30 centimeters long, large and triangular, and ended in a particularly narrow snout. Of course, its jaws were full of sharp, conical teeth. The individual was probably swimming in a lake or a river at the time, searching for its next meal. The ornithopod, on the other hand, was a tiny juvenile, weighing between 1 to 1.7 kilograms. It was a two-legged, plant-eating dinosaur. Now, there are two scenarios that could have happened. The first scenario is that this ornithopod came to drink at the water's edge and was ambushed by Confractosuchus. This behaviour is very similar to modern crocodiles. The second scenario is that the ornithopod was already dead in the water or dead on the riverbank and the crocodiles smelt an opportunity to scavenge an easy meal. With the current evidence, either scenario is equally likely, but also equally unprovable. And besides, the dichotomy is actually irrelevant. Ha, ah, yes. The real question is, was Confractosuchus a specialist feeder or more of a generalist? Well, we can actually answer this question. In their analysis, Matt White and others tested this and found that Confractosuchus was a macro generalist, which basically just means it could hunt and eat animals much larger than itself. Its vertebrae and reinforced neck were specially evolved to deal with ripping off larger mouthfuls while also allowing their neck to be flexible. The authors pointed out that these features were similar to those used by modern crocodiles 
to grab prey at the water's edge and rip them apart. Therefore, its anatomy meant that Confractosuchus was very likely to have been an ambush predator of juvenile dinosaurs. Otherwise, why have these features? However, the authors also make it clear that Confractosuchus wasn't some specialist hunter of dinosaurs. No, 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 it, it would have hunted anything in its freshwater ecosystem. Like living platyrostral crocodilians, we postulate that Confractosuchus was a more opportunistic feeder than is indicated by its abdominal contents. To answer the big question, Confractosuchus was an opportunistic feeder that both scavenged when there was an easy meal and also ambushed and killed other dinosaurs when it had the opportunity. Why this crocodile died remains a mystery. There's no teeth found associated with the skeleton and no tooth marks on its bones that might suggest that it had been hunted by other predators. It could have been scavenged, which would explain why most of its back legs and tail are missing from the skeleton, but even this is unprovable. The authors suggest that if prehistoric crocodiles had powerful stomach acids like modern crocodiles, then the mere presence of this ornithopod in its stomach must have meant the Confractosuchus died very shortly after its last meal. But again, we can't prove that Confractosuchus had powerful stomach acids. All we do know is that the corpse of Confractosuchus only spent a short time decaying on the riverbed before it became buried by sediment. Over millions of years, this sediment compacted into a round concretion around the animal until eventually it was found 93 million years later by Australian paleontologists. Wow, what a great start to the year. Australia has already published a paper with so many remarkable scientific breakthroughs. This one specimen has achieved the first skeleton of an ornithopod dinosaur from the Winton Formation, a new species of Australian crocodile from the Winton Formation, and the world's first ever discovery of a non-avian dinosaur inside the stomach of a crocodile. Locally here in Australia, these discoveries are incredibly important because they help to highlight the different relationships between different animals that were living in the Winton area 93 million years ago. And internationally, it's incredibly important as well because it's more undeniable proof that when they had the chance, crocodiles did indeed eat dinosaurs. Hi folks, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this episode of Prehistoric Australia. I can tell you the day the discovery came out in that paper, I was so excited that I started writing and researching that day. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. Now folks, you've all seen the evidence this episode. I want to know, do you think that that dinosaur was scavenged or hunted by the crocodile? Let me know in the comments below. Also feel free to like and subscribe to the channel. And if you want to support us more, you can support us on Patreon. In fact, if you donate to our top tier, you can actually request a topic that you want covered and we'll make it for you and our other patrons exclusive to Patreon. Speaking of which, big shout out to our current patrons, Tom Capitani, Kim Daniel, and Ella Fuller. Thank you so much for your support. If a dinosaur can be found in the gut of a crocodile, I cannot wait to find out what more discoveries await us in 2022 when it comes to Australian paleontology. Thanks folks, we'll see you next time.